how hot is that? How hard is it? Oh, okay. I'll tell you what, like um, right now, explode, right? um, this goes up to 300. Okay, uh, welcome back to uh, Exhibition Chemistry. I'm so delighted to actually be able to be joined this month by a real human being uh, after being locked down for a while. Uh, this is Malcolm. Say hello, Malcolm. Hello, how's it going? Yeah. Okay, and um, Malcolm has joined us from the, the English department, actually, uh, here at school. Um, we're going to be having a look at some steam, which is kind of interesting because um, Malcolm's just been visiting some Roman ruins and we were talking about how close they were to sort of investigating, like, getting steam power to work. So, um, before we sort of get into things, we better sort of pop on some eye protection. Looking good, buddy. Okay, and we want to actually sort of, uh, first of all, just have a little talk about what we have up in front of us. So, um, Malcolm, do you want to just briefly describe what, what you can kind of see around you and what you think, what, what's going on? So, there's a beaker on a hot plate mm -hmm. and a copper tube coming out of the beaker mm -hmm. and a big glass tube going up much higher. And yeah. there's some white stuff in the beaker. And the white stuff that's in there, those are sort of like boiling chips. They're basically to help, uh, as we begin to heat this up, we're going to start boiling the liquid, and it's going to boil a little bit more smoothly, a little bit like sort of sticking raisins inside. Uh, have you ever stuck raisins inside like a like fizzy fizzy pop and watch them dancing up and down? You should try that. It's okay. awesome. Okay, so they'll start dancing around in there just to help that sort of going off smoothly. Um, Meanwhile, this sort of long tube, we want this to be uh, at least sort of sort of 60 centimeters in height. The objective here is that obviously we've got like a, a bung on the top and it's, this is our safety valve. So if, if we start to sort of boil a little bit too rapidly in here, then we've got like this sort of water in the tube that will begin to sort of rise up. And we have a, like a long, long warning to actually sort of take the, the water off of the hot plate in case there's some kind of a blockage that's occurring. Or run. Or run away. There is that as well, I suppose. Uh, and of course, you're right. We've got this sort of copper tube. Do you know? I bent this into shape by hand. It's it's a lot easier to do than than you might think. Um, and this is quite easy to, to come 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 to hands with. It was a, I think it's about like five millimeters uh, internal diameter on the inside, and I've got it running through this this bung here. But it's a pretty simple apparatus apart from that. So inside, we're we're beginning to heat up our liquid, and of course, our liquid in this case is water. Um, and like. When you sort of think about like what's taking place inside with the water at the moment, like what do you visualize happening inside there? We've got our water molecules, like you know, they're getting hotter. Sort of, yeah. what are they doing? So they're starting to run around m more quickly. That's exactly right. Okay, jump around a lot more. Okay, and, and yeah. our temperature of our substance is directly proportional to how fast they're running around. Essentially, or spe specifically, it's their kinetic energy. Um, and the kinetic energy of the particles in there is beginning to sort of increase. Uh, and it, actually, in terms of water, there's a number of different things that you can kind of be doing around there. The, the water molecules could be sort of moving up, down, left, right, forwards and backwards, uh, and that will increase their temperature. There are a few other things that the water can do without changing its temperature, such as like flipping around or, or vibrating in different ways. Specifically, in terms of like temperature effects, that's like up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards kind of motion. Now, of course, in here we have our sort of water that's sort of behaving like, like a liquid. And not only, you know, these water molecules are not behaving independently of one another, there's actually like going to be some attractive forces between those things within the liquid. And of course, if we begin to heat this up uh, hot enough, in fact, at the surface probably right now, although we can't see it, something else is probably also happening other than water molecules moving faster. What do you think might be happening at, like, at that like, the very top surface? in terms of our water molecules. It's maybe vaporizing. Exactly right. Okay, so there's this idea that we've got some energy available to us to help the water molecules move faster, or some of that energy could be used to help them overcome the forces between the water molecules. But we sort of got to be aware that like that energy can't be used to necessarily to do both things at exactly the same time. Meanwhile, we're starting to get a little bit of action inside our tube here, and you'll notice that sort of there's a few bubbles forming on our little boiling chips. They're sort of beginning to sort of hold up. And at this point, I think what we're going to do is just take a brief pause for a few seconds to do some magic of film fast forward until we get this onto a rolling boil so we can see what's happening next. So we'll just hit pause for a second and fast forward. 
Okay, so we've sort of come along a few seconds later and we're starting to come to a rolling boil inside and we can see that there are, like, it's definitely like a, a droplet of water sort of forming at the end of that tube. And at the beginning, as we saw, that, that droplet is going to be relatively cool. But as the temperature in the copper tubing starts to increase, that water can get up to sort of boiling temperature. So we've got to be careful about that and we're keeping our hands well clear of that as it's happening. And we can actually hear now, I don't know if you can hear yeah. There's definitely something sort of coming out the end. I might even move yeah, the microphone over here. Okay, so there's so you say you can see some steam coming yeah. out. So what does that what when you visualize steam, what does that look like to you? Like a cloud. Like a cloud. Like, a, like you see steam coming out of a kettle, don't you? And this is this weird thing, is that commonly we sort of use that word to describe steam, but actually that's not steam. No. I'm about to play that's like mist. Because let's what state is steam? Is it solid, liquid, gas? It's a liquid. Ah, aha. Uh -huh. Now, water we know is, is a liquid, and mist are droplets of liquid suspended within a gas. But steam itself, like so from a scientific perspective, is actually, we're talking about water as a gas. And water mm -hmm. as a gas is completely, essentially, invisible. So the stuff that you see coming out of a kettle, actually, it, it's, it's cloud, it's mist. It's not necessarily steam, but there will be sort of steam in and around there. And we can see, yeah, like there's sort of little bits of cloud sort of coming around here. So it'd be interesting to see what, what we see on the temperature now. And there's lots of droplets coming out at the end now. And that's, that's jumped up quite a lot. Mm. In fact, the thermometer is struggling to, to catch up. with sort of 82, 83, okay, 89, and presumably 90. You can kind of get a, maybe get a guess for where we are aiming. Yeah. 92, 93, 94. Incidentally, of course, we're not at sea level. So this probably is not going to get like to to 100, we're, we're like 94, 95, it seems to be okay. where it's kind of stabilizing. Yeah. No major surprises so far. Yeah. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah, okay, so let's sort of now do a little investigation. We've got some, what we think are sort of droplets of water essentially coming out from the end of this tube. Uh, big science surprise coming up You're here. You're gonna set fire to something. Uh, now, if you were to set fire to something, I've got some, some splints here. Can you hold those for me? And we're gonna, we're gonna, I've just got two of them here just because we're outdoors, a bit of a breeze. Um, and you can sort of hold them downwards to, to help them keep burning. And the idea is that you want to sort of shelter that. We light it and then you're gonna just leave the flame in the end there. And when we light this and you put the flame into the, the steam, what do you think is gonna happen to the flame? The flame will go out. Okay. Scientific prediction. Give it a try. Okay, now be careful with your left hand there. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and you can see it's kind of blowing out. You know, you can see the steam that sort of, the sort of, uh, and the smoke that's sort of coming across from it. No major surprises so far. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. Now that's because, of course, the hottest temperature that this can be right now is 100 degrees. 100 degrees. And like, as an English teacher, you know that the temperature that paper for example has to hit in order to ignite is 415 degrees Fahrenheit of course which in, in in our common parlance our international standard is like two about 230 degrees Celsius and again that's obviously significantly higher than whatever is coming out from here so how hot can water get I have no idea there's a Excellent, excellent answer because, because we know that the hottest this can get right now is 100 degrees Celsius because all of the heat energy is, that is being supplied to that water is coming from here. Anything that escapes up from here is no longer being supplied with heat energy. So anything that is a gas that's sort of escaping from there has got no more opportunity to heat up. But water can, of course, get much higher than 100 degrees Celsius if it has already vaporized. So what we're going to do is give it a second chance awesome. for some energy, okay? Okay, so I've, I've lit my um, blow, blowtorch slash bunch, Bunsen. Either of those would be fine for this purpose. And we're bringing this in here and we're just gonna heat up the copper tubing. Now, have you noticed anything happening differently at the end of the tube over the last, like the last few sort of 30 seconds or so? Does it look any, it seems to have stopped, doesn't it? Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool, huh? Like we've, we've got it hotter, but it seems to have stopped doing the thing that it was doing. Yeah. 
But remember, what was the thing that you could see before? The steam coming out, which was the water vapor. Wait, but could you see the water vapor? I could see the mist. Aha, you could see the mist. And of course, there is no more mist now because this water now is significant. It's much hotter than a temperature at which it could condense to form those droplets. The question is, how hot is it? Okay, okay so let, well, let's um, see if we can kind of do our sort of re repeat experiment, but have a look at it kind of the other way around. So this time we've got ourselves, because we are significantly hotter now, so we, what we want to do is be, be pretty careful. We don't want to put our hands anywhere near the end of that tube. Okay, and just keeping your hands well clear. And by the way, obviously, if we were doing this actually in a classroom, I'd, I'd never actually get a student to do this, but you know, you're, I don't mind killing you, actually, if I'm honest, Malcolm. You're a, nice, you're, a, you're a good bloke, but let's see what we can have. What we're gonna do is hold that match right up to the end of the tube there. Paper yeah, here. It just went. It just went, okay. Let's give that another try now. It, now it's sort of, it's gonna get hotter and hotter over the next couple of seconds. So we can try that with a piece of paper as well. We've got smoke almost immediately coming off from there. And we've definitely hit our like sort of Fahrenheit 451 as it were, uh, sort of more than 230 degrees. But it's interesting because you'll notice that the, the paper itself, although it's sort of charring here, probably won't catch fire because you still do have, um, you know, the other thing that is required for it to combust, of course, is a good supply of oxygen. Oxygen, and of course, there's lots of vapor that's being pumped out from the end there and displacing some oxygen vapor from around. So let's give it maybe one more try with the, the match now. It should be really cooking. And there we go. Pretty cool, huh? That's awesome. So what we've just done there is essentially we've started a fire with water. with water, okay? Which of course we normally rely on the fact that sort of water is something we can use to put out a fire because of course if you put it on there, all of that energy that is, is absorbed from the fire reducing the temperature down to 100 degrees Celsius again, okay? But in this case, we've, given, we've got like a secondary source of heating that can actually get the, the water to ignite a fire. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you very much, Malcolm, for joining us. I think we've got to finish with a, a woo handshake, yeah, uh, given the times that we're living in. Um, so really simple experiment, and there's lots of really cool things that you can kind of play around with this and some interesting discussions. So give it a try and uh, maybe let us know how you're getting on. And um, we'll see you next month. Thank you very much, Malcolm, for joining. Thanks, Declan. Bye. Bye.